Dear students, today we will discuss about TCP IP suite. In fact, in previous modules, we have learned about protocols. And in TCP IP, there are several protocols available, which we will be discussing few of them in this module. So why we need uh, such a model or such a set of protocols? In fact, manufacturers which build different devices and softwares want to communicate with other systems or softwares developed by other manufacturers, and they need a standardized method. So such a standardized model which have been formed is known as Open System Interconnection or OSI model. So this has been built by International Organization for Standardization and it has seven layers of hierarchy as compared to which we discussed in previous modules, the four level hierarchy. However, this remains slow in replacing the four level hierarchy because it was already in use when OSI model was proposed as a seven layer hierarchy. So, you, uh, we have defined TCP IP suite, but here we want to make one distinction that this suite have many, many different protocols. And one of the protocol is known as TCP, which is Transmission Control Protocol, and other is known as Internet Protocol or IP. But all of these protocols even there are many more protocols other than TCP IP in TCP IP suite, but we normally or wrongly refer all of this suite as TCP IP suite. So uh, in this module, we will be mainly focusing on TCP and IP protocols. TCP defines a version of transport layer, and there could be more than one way of implementing the TCP using one way could be that we use TCP, uh, the transport layer implementation, and the other is UDP, the user datagram protocol. And uh, why we have two options, in fact, this is similar that we want to ship some of the uh, things to our friend, and we have two shipping companies available. So sometime, depending upon the requirements, we decide that we need to ship our uh, things using one shipping company, which could be TCP, and another shipping company, which could be UDP. We will see further details. So, in fact, the TCP establish a connection first. So, whenever you implement the transport layer using TCP, it first sends a signal to the receiver, and receiver acknowledges that, okay, I am ready, now you can start sending the data and then that data is transmitted. However, in the case of UDP, this is called a connection-less protocol because it starts sending data and even it may happen that the receiver is not even operational, is not available, is not listening, is not receiving the data of whatever is being sent by the sender. So, TCP uh, transport layer at origin and destination works together by acknowledgement as we have discussed and there is a possibility of retransmission as well. So for example, if the uh, receiver tells that I haven't received this packet, then that kind of packet can be resent by the sender. So this, uh, that's why this is called a reliable protocol. However, UDP is unreliable protocol. So TCP can also adjust the transmission rate depending upon the receiving capabilities of the receiver. Uh, this kind of transport layer implementation can basically enhance or reduce the speed of the transmission. And it can also avoid the congestion if there is. So until now, you might be very fascinating that all of the benefits are for TCP. However, there are some benefits of UDP protocol as well. So for example, transport layer based on UDP is more streamlined than TCP because UDP is going to send the data and is not waiting for the acknowledgement. 
so if you are talking 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 and you are not listening to other person then of course you are talking more and you are transferring more data so the requirement is that udp can be used in such a scenario when there is someone who is ready to listen you right so such systems are like dns lookups which we have discussed previously and voice over ip systems although in email transfers where you need an acknowledgement the tcp is a better choice and then there is a ip internet protocol which is a standard implementation of network layer and about this we have already talked about network layer implementation that there is a forwarding and routers and routing tables however there is one another uh, new thing which we are going to learn in this module which is called hop count so basically uh, when the packet is sent from the sender side so there is a count of hop that is added with the packet so hop are the temporary stops in between the communication from sender to receiver so it say for example 30 so this means that this packet should be Uh, received by the receiver within the 30 hops otherwise this packet will be lost or will be terminated otherwise if we do not have hop count this packet will keep rolling in the network so normally 64 is sufficient to send a packet from uh, one sender to the receiver and it actually reaches to the receiver end including all of the routers in between so if we conclude today's module we have learned about osi the tcp versions for uh, transport layer implementation and udp version and then we have learned the differences between tcp and udp and in which situations both are uh, useful and we have also discussed about ip